What is up, my YouTube buddies? Today, little update on the skiff build. So, spent some time the other day. I'm gonna spend the rest of this afternoon. I got a couple jobs to go run and do this morning, but this afternoon I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna get the rest of this soaking wet foam out of here. There's a lot of water in there, as you can see. It did rain the other day, so some of that's that, but got a lot of deck ripped out, a couple trash bags full of foam over there, but as you can see, uh, the shovel technique, I'm going to call it, actually worked really well. So I used the shovel, scooped it all out, got it all pulled and yoked out of there. Um, yeah, I have a piece of Kusa from an old project <clears throat> that I'm going to take and put like in this area so we can mount the console to the Kusa <clears throat> and not have to worry about that um, with the foam because the rest of it... I'm going to use four pound density polyester pour foam. Um, I'll post a little pic here in the clip in a second um, from US Composites. And you can actually polyester resin right over top of it. So I'm going to pour that in here, get it all nice, everything all nice and covered, and then come back with a sander and sand it, level it all off, and then just glass right over top of it, kind of like a Boston Whaler. Um, that's the way they're done. That way I don't have to like pour foam and then put the Venicel, which is four pound foam anyway, on top of the pour foam. I'm just going to pour foam it, spend some time sanding it nice and flat, and then put like two layers of 1708 on top of it. And yeah, it's all closed cell foam, so even if you like run a screw into it to mount something, as long as you kind of seal it with 5200, it's not going to get a bunch of water like soaking down through the foam and doing this again. Um, yeah, so that's the plan for that. We're going to do that. And then the next video will probably be um, on the, the next video on the skip update will be doing all of that. So we'll pour, pour the foam, glass it, then build the decks glass them um that'll probably be one video it might be kind of long if i can i'll clip it all down so that way maybe we can get into gel coating too because that'd be kind of cool um i think i'm gonna spray it i really want to spray it i've never sprayed gel coat before i've rolled it um and then kind of splatter painted it but 3m has this really cool gun it's called an accu spray gun that has a pressure assisted cup so that the air from the gun actually charges the cup and um it puts positive pressure on the cup compressing the little bladder inside and forcing the material out so you can shoot thicker material out of a smaller tip than normally needed and then it also like the tip and the cup and all that stuff is all disposable so you don't have to like worry about super crazy cleanup um i'll post a picture in the video here of the gun um, and it's fairly reasonable. It's not like freaking six hundred dollar spray gun. I think it's like one hundred and fifty bucks, two hundred bucks or something for the gun and some other stuff. Um, got compressors in the shop. Honestly, probably take the boat to the shop to spray it. My dad's got a shop uh, for plumbing. And yeah, that's kind of where we're at with the skiff project. It's uh, it's coming along. We got all the foam, almost all the foam ripped out of it. Um, and I'm gonna go get some more foam today with the foam and I'm probably gonna need some more glass I'm probably gonna have close to $800 in material I'd say maybe a thousand bucks, which is a lot more than I wanted to spend I only wanted to spend 500 bucks in material thinking we were gonna do the deck the front and back deck and knock it out, but I'd rather do it Do it right than Put decks in it and then have it be a dog because it's full of water and it's heavy and so this way it'll be super light it'll 
be nice and light with all new foam, all new foam decks instead of all that wood. Um, it should be pretty awesome. And now, uh, now let's have some fun. Let's get some tile fishing done. I'm gonna do a little voiceover because the clip, um, I, I completely, I'm, new to this whole YouTube thing, so I'm not very good with bringing a camera with me. So I completely forgot to grab the GoPro. Um, so I filmed it all on my phone. It actually came out really good for being filmed on a phone. I was surprised. But the audio wasn't the best in the beginning. Um, and we kind of had some music playing in the background. So I'm going to do a voiceover in the beginning. I'm going to explain the rigs that we use. Uh, my buddy Phil made them. He's uh, basically a professional fisher. Many fishes for a living. Uh, he's a captain so he made the deep drop rigs we were on his bay boat um we caught a rosy and uh nice it was 15 20 pound tile fish somewhere around there probably 15 16 pounds and yeah it was pretty awesome that was the first time i've ever caught a tile fish i've done a lot of pelagic fishing a lot of uh, bottom fishing but no real deep drop in before um and it was cool i'll walk you through the process and hopefully maybe some of you guys can catch a tile fish I'll see you all there. So here we go, heading out to go deep dropping. We got right there, three-way swivel, going to the bait with a glow squid on every other hook. We're running a four-hook rig, a little light up there by the, by the swivel where the rig attaches. Um, we got a bonita strip, a squid skirt, another bonita strip. This is pretty much the setup that we're running but with four hooks we're running six pounds of lead um every other hook had a glow squid on it and then a little all the rigs all the branch lines had glow um they're called crimp protector sleeves those were up on the the swivel going towards the branch line we were running same kind of deal about a foot of branch line um, but because we were running four, we were only running them two feet apart um, between each branch line. This is another rig you can use because tilefish like to, they nest in the bottom. So they come out of burrows in the bottom to eat. So when you have the rig laid out across the bottom like that, um, it works really well for tilefish. Right here, you can see the rod will do like a quick double bounce just before it bends over. That was, um, that was a bite. We ended up catching a black belly rose fish, uh, also known as rosies. That was a picture of one there. Um, I, again, I'm new to this whole YouTube thing. I'm working on remembering to bring the GoPro everywhere. I completely forgot today when I got the call from my buddy Phil um, to go tile fishing. I completely forgot to grab the GoPro, so I was recording on my phone here. Um, so I didn't get us bringing the fish up, but this is the next drop when we caught the tile fish. So what we're doing here, um, and the way to deep drop properly, is as you're letting the line out to get to the bottom, you want to drive against the current. Um, so that way, once you hit the bottom, then you can kind of drift back towards your line a little bit and get your scope out of it so you're pretty much straight up and down with the weight and the rod tip. So right now, we have a north current. We're driving just barely moving south against the current as the line's going out and we're sending it to the bottom here. Once it hits the bottom, we let out a little bit of extra line to kind of help let them baits lay on the bottom. Like I was talking about earlier with that rig with two weights on it, um, we weren't really running one like that, so we just let out a little bit of extra line to help let the rig lay down there on the bottom in, helps, in hopes of getting all the baits laid out across the bottom and a tile fish coming out and getting one. So right here, you'll see right there, the line kind of slacked off. Um, that was it hitting the bottom. That's how you know you're on the bottom. Let a little bit more out. And then you'll see the boat kind of starts to slow. We start to kind of drift back towards the bait a little bit here. And as we're drifting back towards it, I engage the reel, bring up a little bit of the slack until we just get a nice steady bend bounce kind of deal in the rod so you watching the end of the rod it's kind of going to be doing the same thing the entire time just a nice little up and down motion and as soon as you see anything different like anything at the end of that rod that doesn't look like it's 
normal, like a little double bounce, a, a twitch, a jerk, anything. You want to wait just about a second, but then engage the reel in order to kind of bring it up and set those hooks. So right there, I've gotten a little bit of a bite, um, what looked like a bite. So we, I engaged it, um, started bringing it up, but it didn't really seem like anything was on there. So here I am, I'm dropping back down. As I drop it back down, right there, we hit the bottom, letting a little bit out, letting a little bit out, so it's laid out. And we're just watching for that rod tip to do anything funny. Right there, it kind of just bounced a little bit funny. Right here, I let a little bit more line out to lay it on the bottom. And then right here, right as I lock it up, you'll see it kind of does, it just kind of stays bent over. Like it's it's not bouncing, it's just kind of bent over. It looks like it has some tension on it. So after watching it for a second and the rod being bent over like that, I engage the rod and here you can see it bends way over and it starts bouncing and bam, that tile fish is on. Right there, good? Yeah. Oh, that's a tile. my. That's a nice one. See how he's digging? Yeah. Just, you're gonna have to, if you feel like that, back it off of here. Just keep it covered, but yeah, you, you'll play with it. You're gonna have to keep it off it, all right? Damn, that's the right fish, Jay. That rod has, that's how the one bent yesterday. Hell yeah. Damn, that's the right fish, bro. Well, we got a little bite at first. And yeah. Then hammered it on that yeah. second drop down. That's why I was like, eh, it's not big enough. Yeah. But when you get a bite like that where the rod's doubled, yeah. go a little faster. Hell yeah, Jack. You got the right one. We can stop this. Hell yeah. <laughs> and when it comes up, it'll stop at five meters. Okay. So yeah, and then hand down, crank it. Or go back down with the Oh, and then go up, back? And yeah. And then it'll stop again, and then hand crank. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. 18, nice. 17, 16. Looks like a great fish, man. Yeah, it does. Oh, and he just blew out. Oh my god. Oh, stud. stud. You see the bubbles he blew up? Yeah! Oh! <laughs> That's a big one, Jay. Hell yeah! Let me get the lid. Oh my god, Jay! Stud, dude! That is a giant Jay. stud! That is f***ing huge. Stud. Bro. <laughs> Look at him. Oh, dude. Let's get some pictures. Here, spin the air. Oh my way. god. Huge, dude. Edit that one out. Stud, dude. That's a big yeah, that's a giant, dude. Hell yeah. That's huge. Holy f Jay. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. It's like fucking money, dude. That's a 20 pounder. Hell yeah. Yeah, so that was kind of it. It was a fun day. Nice day out on the water. Um, got the target species, which is always a good thing. I hope, uh, hope you guys all enjoyed. If you did, hit the like and subscribe button and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Over and out.